recording notice. So I want to officially welcome you all and thank you for joining us for uh, how to hold a nonviolence teach-in. Uh, Pache Ibene is the host organization. And for those of you who don't know, Pache Ibene is Italian for peace, Pache, and all good, Bene. Uh, we started about 30 years ago as a primarily a Franciscan organization, although now we work secularly and interfaithly, and we do our work uh, bringing in the Catholic Church to so the principles of nonviolence as well. So uh, we kind of cover it all. I'm Rivera Sun. I am the program coordinator for Pace y Bene. And today's session on how to hold a nonviolence teaching is part of our um, training and preparation for the September 21st to October 2nd Campaign Nonviolence Action Days. So if you can, please go down to your bottom uh, uh, toolbar and click your chat window, open that up, and let us know where you're calling in from and uh, maybe if you're already planning on holding a teach-in in September or if you're thinking about doing a teach-in some other time, because you know what, they're always timely and relevant. Great, Allie B, nice to have you here from Michigan. Michael from New Zealand, my goodness, thank you all the way around the world. It's Santa Fe, New Mexico, one of our wonderful nonviolent cities, Grand Isle, Nebraska, and Peter in Salem, always interested in doing nonviolence training. That's very true, Peter, I know. And Amory, who's been part of our classes before, and Nadia calling in from France. My goodness, we are very global today. It's wonderful to have you, Sarah, from Ohio and Stone Cairns from uh, Oregon. I like your willingness to, to think about it, even if you don't have a plan to do it. That's what today is all about. And it's great to see you and Martin from Beyond uh, War Northwest. Ocean, welcome from Costa Rica and Bashar from Istanbul and Pamela from Rhode Island. My goodness, what a wonderful crew of people you are. I feel so delighted and honored to have you on the call with us today. Um, so I wanna just start with a centering of intention because that's always important uh, when we're, we're thinking about nonviolence. So I just invite you to just take a deep breath and I invite you to just uh, remember that we stand in a long lineage of nonviolence teachings, uh, that this type of action has a long history. And this history has been very powerful in working for social change and social justice through nonviolent action. I want us to just think about the teachings of the 60s in the United States that prepared thousands of people to take action to end racial segregation or and to oppose the Vietnam War. We can think about the thousands of people who held teachings in jails during the clamshell alliances, mass actions to shut down a nuclear power plant. I want us to feel that we're standing in the in solidarity or in the tradition with the nuns and clergy and lay people in the Philippines who held mass teachings on nonviolent struggle that preceded the people power revolution. And the people in Chile who, even though these kind of trainings were completely outlawed and, and came with severe repression, held an each one teach one strategy in their homes, in their basements, in the, the back rooms of churches to spread the skills and resistance that eventually toppled the Pinochet dictatorship. So we hold ourselves in this tradition, knowing its power, knowing its strength, and knowing that these kind of teachings can help our society recognize how we live in cultures of violence and start to share and show that another way is not only possible, it has this tremendous history behind it. So those that we mentioned are just some of the, the people 
And maybe as you sit there, you want to think about a teaching or a teacher or an educator or training that was meaningful to you. Maybe you offered the training. Maybe you took the training. Just hold that in your heart today as well. So as I said earlier, this is part of the Campaign Nonviolence Action Days. <clears throat> they run from uh, September uh, 21st, which is the International Day of Nonviolence, to October 2nd, which is, of course, Gandhi's birthday, and the International Day of Nonviolence. Um, so the International Day of Peace to the International Day of Nonviolence. Campaign Nonviolence has been organizing for 10 years. We started with 200 actions in the first year, and now we have 4,600 actions that happen to build a culture of peace and active nonviolence, free from war, poverty, racism, and environmental destruction. They happen all across the U.S. They happen all around the world. They happen in tiny little towns and massive cities. It's an inspiring thing to see how people are recognizing how the issues are connect connected and how a strand of structural, systemic, cultural, psychological, um, environmental violence runs through many of our societies, but also how the alternatives exist to all of those uh, problems that plague us. And these alternatives are the backbone of what we call the culture of nonviolence. So in September, uh, people are going to be doing a wide range of types of actions. All of these actions are designed to tap into the different aspects of the nonviolent toolbox, from direct actions to protest actions to economic non-cooperation to uh, what Gandhi might call constructive programs um, and much more. We really wanted to give people an opportunity to show up for the movement in the way, in the level that they're excited about, not just comfortable, but excited about, that brings their skills and their talents to the fore. And that also invites people to maybe step beyond what they've uh, most gravitated to and see that there's other aspects of this toolbox to explore. So on the International Day of Nonviolence, uh, we are encouraging people to hold nonviolence teach-ins. And that brings us to today's uh, session and training. Um, we see that we live in a culture of violence and that the culture of violence teaches and trains people to think that violence is okay, moral, cool, justified, uh, inevitable. Um, and on this day, we'd love to see you doing it 365 days a year, but we will, we will start with one day. <laughs> we would like to interrupt those cycles of violence, the relentless training that we get from movies, books, um, news reports, uh, video games, uh, the funding in the military, the ways that we economically support violent systemic and structural violence. Um, we would like to see on this day that we can challenge these values in our society and draw forward from the incredible lineage of nonviolent uh, struggle, nonviolent action, and nonviolent solutions, a set of philosophies, values, and tools that help people really uh, see that another way is possible. To this end, we are asking people to host nonviolence teach-ins, and this can be done in a wide range of ways. You could work with local schools. You could ask faith leaders to give sermons on nonviolence. Uh, we have many tools that we'll talk about in a minute that make not just teaching and talking about nonviolence, but engaging people in the conversation very easy. Uh, you can even do something really off the wall, like sidewalk chalking nonviolence quotes on the streets so that the teaching is actually something that happens as people walk by. You can be very creative about this. One of our um, approaches to nonviolence uh, really stems from uh, the idea that 
plurality is okay, that there are going to be many ways to talk about nonviolence, there are going to be many ways to teach nonviolence, and it's such an immense field that we we need everyone teaching their piece of this truth of the nonviolence uh, culture. Uh, so I'm going to pause there, actually. And uh, today we're going to really look at some of those tools and resources. We're going to talk about some of the practicalities of uh, how to organize those uh, teach-ins. And we're also going to talk about like, what is a teach-in? So let me just pause and see, are there any questions about anything I've just said? or comments, you know, maybe it's not a question. Maybe you'd like to weigh in and give your two cents. Are you gonna send out your slides, Vera? Vera? Uh, sure, yeah, hmm. I could do that, Peter. Great. If there are ones that you're like, oh, that's especially useful to me, just let me know. We also have a nifty little one minute video that kind of uh, shares what these calls to actions are that is really great for letting people know what else is going on. And that will be in the follow-up email. So after the session, I'll send the recording. And all the re so many resources, you will be like, Rivera, you should have just written a book about this one day. Great. So um, let me ask you, how many of you have been part of a teach-in before? You can just raise your hand and let me see some of us. Yeah, how many of you have been the a participant in the teach-in? Yeah, okay. And how many of you have uh, facilitated the teach-in? Great. How many of you are like, I have no idea what a teach-in is and I don't even really want to say it? Yeah, okay, great. You're not alone. You see, you could, I think you saw on the screen. So good on you for getting here to learn something new. Those who are a little more familiar with teach -ins, does anyone want to share what is a teach -in? There's no real wrong answer. So maybe be bold and come off mute and say, this is what I think of as a teach -in. I think a teach -in is uh, an opportunity to get some people together and give them an op give them a chance to see uh, what nonviolence means. A little bit of the basics. Uh, I don't see it as a necessarily as a training, although it could be. Um, but it's sort of going back to uh, the basics of nonviolence, uh, the uh, Gandhian principles or the Kingian principles, if you prefer, and. Uh, then kind of how it works, give some examples, tell some stories, that sort of thing. Great, thank you, Peter. Anyone else want to add to Peter's uh, description of a teaching? I think of teachings as being, I don't know, maybe informal isn't the word, but less structured, more friendly. Um, I've done, I've been a university professor and this is not that. This is more like finding a way of just being like, hey, I know some stuff and I think you'd benefit from knowing some stuff too. I'm really glad you said that because one of the questions I came into this with is I am not an educator, but I know a lot about this stuff. Am I qualified to do a teaching? And yeah, that's something like sharing the knowledge with my community and spreading principles is something that I think is very or to nonviolence as a culture. Wonderful. I love it. I love these dimensions that are coming forward. Anyone else want to add something? Great. So yes to all of this and to a little bit more too. So what I heard you say was a uh, teaching is a little less formal than a public lecture or a talk. You could certainly give a lecture or a talk and call it a teaching, but the the idea is here is that we um, all can do a teaching, right? You do not have to have a graduate degree in nonviolence to do this, 
Um, it will help if you uh, know what piece of nonviolence you would like to engage people in talking about, right? Even if it's a series of discussion questions that you would like to have people discuss, right? Uh, Teach-ins are often on not regularly scheduled events, but they can really take two different forms. So you can have a teach-in that is regularly scheduled, okay? So September, uh, October 2nd at 10 a.m. at the local school, everybody's gonna be in the gymnasium and we're all gonna do this teach-in on nonviolence. That's one kind. Another kind disrupts a regularly scheduled event, usually something that has to do with the issues. So your city council is about to permit um, the weapons manufacturers of opening a new plant uh, in your city. And so you disrupt the city council and you do a teach-in on peace and nonviolence, maybe talk about nonviolent peace force and alternatives to war, right? So a teach-in can disrupt the regularly scheduled program. In the 60s, a lot of the teach-ins that happened uh, were both. Some of them involve students walking out of class and studying the real truth of the Vietnam War instead of uh, whatever they were supposed to be studying. Right now in Florida, uh, the students are walking out of class and actually teaching and holding teach-ins on the banned parts of the curriculum or on critical race theory, right? So for us, both formats of teach-ins are totally okay. All right, does that make sense? So you can be creative about these teach-ins uh, and we'll talk about some of that in just a second. Uh, you can also um, think beyond uh, even the, the basic structure. And Amory, I see your question in the chat box, which is great because that's what we're gonna talk about. Uh, duration, what's a class, what's a teach-in? Several sessions, a group size, age, experience range. It wouldn't be very helpful to me if I was just like, eh, yes, all of the above. But really, uh, you can really tailor this for what makes sense uh, in your community or your situation. So how to organize and prepare, and, and this will answer some of the questions and then we'll go a little bit deeper. Um, when you're thinking about doing a teaching and you want to do the first thing where it's actually a regularly scheduled event, you're not gonna disrupt something, just ask. You may be surprised at how many people are like, yes, please hold a nonviolence teach-in, right? Um, you can make it really easy for your host group um, by saying, I'm really available at your regular monthly meeting and I'm happy to speak for five minutes on this topic, right? Um, you can think beyond just in the schools. What if you went to the Lions Club, right? Or the Rotary, or um, the you gave a talk on one nonviolent campaign during the senior center's dinner, right? You can tailor your message to the audience, and you can go two ways with this, right? You can take the piece of nonviolence that you know really well, and you can think, who would really need this? And you can go talk to them about it. Or you can say, what group do I have a connection to and what piece of nonviolence might be very interesting to them and why? Uh, you can work with a friend or a small group to anticipate the questions that might come up and actually role play or question or um, kind of play out the responses you might give. Um, and one of the things that I love to remind people about anytime we step into an educator's position <laughs> even if it's a facilitator of a conversation, is be okay with saying, I don't know, there's so much to learn, or gosh, I have no idea, but I'm gonna go look that up later. That's okay. So you can be bold with these uh, teach-ins. You can also um, do teach-ins that happen over the radio, right? Maybe you have a friend that has a weekly radio show or a podcast. Uh, you could do it in a three minute comment period for the city council meeting. Uh, you could do it at your staff meeting, right? You could do, do it whether it's planned or not planned. Um, certainly, I've seen staff members who, uh, oh, not at Pachi Penny, this never happens, haul off for three minutes on a topic, right? Um, you could do it on public transit, 
We actually have a great story of teach-ins that happened on the train on the way to DC and involved people who were planning to go to the demonstration and people who were just there in the dining car. So let me ask you, where else? Where else could you hold a teach-in? Any ideas that come to you? And go ahead and come off mute or put a, something in the chat box. I see Ali says, a local library would love to have you. Yeah. Yes, Peter. Yeah, one of the things that George Lake, who's my favorite nonviolence trainer, loves to do is during his nonviolence training, he's, he likes to uh, make people get up on a soapbox in a public place and just start talking about whatever. And this could be the subject. Just set it up in a public square and just start doing it. It's yeah. a little bit scary to a lot of people, but uh, it's a heck of a good experience. Right, you could have prompts, questions that are prompts, which often can be um, a good starting place. Like, what it, what does nonviolence mean to you? Right, and you may be surprised at the answers that come up. Uh, thank you for your comments in the chat box. You could do it at a public park or a farmer's market, for example. Uh, congregations, absolutely. At an art event or a cultural event that's happening. And Sarah mentioned local homeschool groups or co-ops. Yeah. So going back to that question that Amory uh, really lifted up, your teaching may be one minute long. <laughs> it may be occupying social media for four hours while you uh, talk at length, or maybe you read Gandhi's audio autobiography on Facebook Live for four hours. Um, bring water. <laughs> uh, it could be multiple sessions. That is totally fine. It could be a single event that happens on a day. Your group size may be one other person, like in Chile, when they had an each one teach one strategy. Um, it could be that you are teaching into a thousand people at an annual conference that you happen to be at. Um, Age and experience range can really range, but think about tailoring what you're going to share to be appropriate for the, the group that you think you're going to connect to, right? So um, you may, uh, what you talk about with kindergartners is going to be really different than what you talk about with an intergenerational crowd or a group of uh, people your own age, looking around the screen, most of us are older than 12. Uh, so, you know, just think a little bit about not just what you're going to say, but maybe some of the how of that, especially with the little, little guys, right, where their attention span is a little bit shorter than some of us as we get older. Other questions from folks at this moment? Or comments? Peter mentioned George and the soapbox, and that made a big impression on me. I think I read George had a story where maybe his granddaughter, someone young in, in his circle, was. It, they talked about the nerves openly, and a big part of the story was uh, like a friend going up with them and sharing the space together. So uh, mixing like a sense of that empowerment with understanding the nerves with kids, I think, would also help me as a facilitator because I would have nerves as well. So if we're all there and I'm helping them and secretly or not, you know, not so secretly, they're helping me. Uh, anyhow, that, that story from George rang true. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to do this alone. You can do a teach-in with a buddy, with a team, right? So if you want to do an hour-long teach-in, maybe you have 12 people who each speak for five minutes, right? Maybe you do a fishbowl where you have four people having a conversation about nonviolence and other folks feeling more comfortable listening. Many options. Other, any other questions?
Great. So I'm going to share a few tools and resources. Oh, I see something in the chat box. Love the idea of reading a book or a series of quotes. Yes. Okay. Hey, Marie, you're right. You're you're coming up with a session just in time. So this, this is the next piece. Uh, Pache Veni has been around for a while and we're uh, endlessly creative and we've spent a lot of that creativity coming up with tools and resources that help make this job easier. Um, we also have incredible colleagues in the field of nonviolence who are also doing the same thing. So I'm going to share some of the resources and then I'm going to invite you to share any resources that are easily available to people that they could use in their teach-ins um, that you love. Okay, so just a heads up, you'll get a chance to share as well. So the first one that we're super excited about right now is our nonviolence coloring pages. We just commissioned a cultural artist to um, make four different campaigns that each highlight a different aspect of U.S. nonviolent struggles. Um, they are free, they are downloadable, they are easy to print off on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Each one has a study guide that will also print off when you hit that print button that includes a paragraph long synopsis of the campaign that has uh, key points about the image that people are working with, like what is in this image? Why is this person crawling up the stairs backwards? That sort of thing. Um, and that has discussion questions that you as a facilitator can ask people while they're using them. So we are really excited about this as an initial round of ways to get people talking about social justice, particularly if, um, you know, your group is not quite ready to talk about uh, some of the issues that are going on today. Teaching history is a great way to backdoor in some of those conversations. Uh, so again, you will find these on our website. I'll also send around the link as we uh, in the follow-up email. And you could use these in a group. You could have four different, uh, you could print them all out and have four different conversations going on. You could use just one if that makes more sense. Um, but, you know, art is a wonderful way to have people spend time with a campaign to think really about what, what are the major actions that made the Delano grape strike and boycott work? Um, how did children stop working in the factories and end up being able to go to school, et cetera? But that, wait, that's just one of the many resources we have. We also have a, a series of posters called the Nonviolence Means Posters. And when you um, look at the, the website page for them, each one comes with a description of how this social justice issue or this practice is related to nonviolence. Uh, you could print those out and have uh, open up conversations with people about what does nonviolence mean to you, or how do you see nonviolence, or do, does this mean nonviolence to you as well, right? So you can have an art display that goes along with conversations. One of the tool easiest ways to do a teach-in <laughs> is to show a 30-minute segment of A Force More Powerful use their really great discussion guide and uh, have a conversation about uh, some of the historic struggles around the world that have been incredibly powerful. It is a, a tremendous resource that we can all use. You can stream the videos uh, for free. Uh, speaking of videos, Meta Center for Nonviolence have sh has short five to 10 minute animations that you can facilitate a conversation around as well. And the Global Nonviolent Action Database has just a tremendous amount of nonviolent campaigns that are all ranked from one to 10, 10 being the most successful, um, and are all cross-referenced by uh, century, by social... You're frozen. Database, and then have them report back to small groups on what did you notice? What did you see? Uh, which campaigns leapt out, out to you? 
Another tool or resource are the Gandhi cards from the MK Gandhi Institute. These beautiful uh, photographs are something you could pass out one to each person. They have a synopsis on the back of a value of nonviolence and a discussion question connected to it. So again, very easy to use. Uh, Erica Chenoweth's TEDx talk. Also, super easy resource. Show the twelve-minute video. Ask people simply what to share. What to share? What inspired or uh, surprised them about the video? I hope this is giving you a sense that a nonviolence teaching can be fun and actually not super complicated. And again, uh, nonviolence news, which I'm the editor of. Full disclosure: you could do something fun, like asking people to find three stories that they can present in a nonviolence news TV anchor role play. So uh, let me pause there. So any uh, resources or tools that you really love that you would like this group and everyone listening to the recording to know about. Ah, Jean is holding up Blueprint for Revolution. Thank you, Jean. By Sergey Popovich. Great book. Anything else that you want to share or mention? Another tool or resource is sharing Dr. King's six principles, asking people to reflect on what's um, easy for them, what they're already doing, and, or what's more challenging for them. What do they wrestle with? Yeah, and thank you for the note in the chat box, that Third Harmony book by Michael Nagler, or also the Nonviolence Handbook, uh, has many passages that can be extracted, that can be talked about, discussed. And George Lakey's recent memoir. Yep. Great. So there's really no end to these resources. We just picked some of our top ones that seem to lend themselves to this nonviolence teaching uh, that really make it easy for us to sit in the role of facilitators and opening conversations with our communities um, and kind of diffuse the feeling of like, oh, I have to be an expert and present for an hour and a half on a topic, right? So Pache Veni and Campaign Nonviolence's perspective on nonviolence is that this is a lived thing for many people. We all actually know a lot more about nonviolence than uh, we often think. And so the role that we play is about creating spaces where our understanding of nonviolence has a chance to be expressed. In a culture of violence, this can be a revolutionary act, right? Great. Any questions or comments? Okay, so um, I'm just going to keep going on and then I would love to give you a chance to go into breakout rooms and talk a little bit with one another about maybe what you're thinking about doing, or if you were going to do one, what might be intriguing to you, um, or I, I'm thinking about doing such and such, but I'm a ner little nervous about this aspect, okay? So before we even get there, I'm just going to cover some of the basics from our perspective um, at Pache Bene. And this might answer some of the questions you might have. So when you're going to hold a nonviolence teaching, some of the, the basics, uh, plan and practice. You can just wing it. I will confess to having done that, winging nonviolence uh, <laughs> education. But you will probably feel much more comfortable and relaxed if you get together with a friend and talk through what you want to do, practice your opening remarks, um, you know, have a little sheet with your discussion questions. So if you can't remember what discussion question number four is, you've got it, right? Um, yeah, so practicing beforehand can make you, you feel more comfortable, which is probably going to make other people feel more comfortable too. 
uh, wear some nonviolent swag. We have some great nonviolent swag. Nothing. It's like having a second teaching tool right on you on your back. If you're wearing a T-shirt or a pin, or uh, you have your coloring page hanging on the wall of your Zoom call, right? Uh, thank your hosts. Please remember to do that. Um, or explain why you're disrupting the city council meeting. Uh, that's also important. You might thank them for their, hopefully, a little bit of patience. Please tell people about the campaign nonviolence action days, especially if you're doing this on September, uh, October 2nd, or any time in that window between September 21st and October 2nd. Uh, and I'll say a little bit more about what to say in just a second. So then do the activity and give the talk, right? Don't, don't not do that part. And if it's uh, something that's participatory with people, plan a debrief or a closing round at the end to ask people what was meaningful. Not only is this good reflection for them, you may be surprised. I can't tell you how many teaching events or facilitation things I've had where I've just been convinced that everybody is just miserable. They're just frowning. They, they're they scowling at me. Uh, I think nobody's liking it. And I ask them at the end, what was meaningful for you? And people are frowning because they're having these immense realizations or they're focusing really intensely or they're loving the material um, and taking a lot of notes. So they're not just actually playing on their phones. They're actually writing things down. So debrief at the end, do a closing round. If possible, take some pictures. Sometimes this will be easy, sometimes this won't be, but um, we like to tell the stories of what we're doing because it encourages other people to do similar things. And if it's happening during action days, please submit an action report. We will send you the link for this multiple times. So here's what I'd like to hear you all say uh, if you're doing this during action days. I'd love you to know some key points about campaign nonviolence. Uh, basically, campaign nonviolence action days happens between September 21st, the International Day of Peace, and October 2nd, the International Day of Nonviolence. Over 60,000 people across the United States and around the world are participating in 4,600 plus action events to build a culture of peace and active nonviolence, free from war, poverty, racism, and environmental destruction. Today, we're going to learn a little bit about and explore a nonviolence teaching, and then you can tell them whatever it is you're going to do. Right? You can ablib this, you can change it a little bit, but it is great if people on the ground know that they're part of something actually pretty large. Um, if you're doing it on October 2nd, you may want to make a note to yourself to actually talk a little bit about Gandhi and the fact that it is Gandhi's birthday and what is significant about what Gandhi achieved. Uh, I would not presume that everyone knows much more about Gandhi than that he, uh, maybe his head with his spectacles icon image. Um, and just make sure that people know, right, that what he did was gain the independence of India from Great Britain as a colonial power. He also coined the term nonviolence. Um, and advance global recognition of the tools, practices, and philosophies of nonviolent action as a social and political force to be reckoned with. Uh, there may be other things you wish to add, but those are some basic points. So what is nonviolence? Uh, this is such a great question. I invite you to sit down with yourself and try to answer this question because, you know, it's likely that someone will ask you. There are a lot of different um, answers or responses you can give. We are okay with the, there being many different responses. Um, just think through what it means to you, right? We like to say as a baseline, it's not just passivity and it's certainly not responding with violence. So we, we hope you might tap into it as a force for transformation. I, it is all the other options in between. It is active, it is powerful, it is um, engaged, it is often incredibly creative. I like to say that people use it all over the world, that it's actually thousands of years old, and that it has brought about some of the major social changes that have won human rights uh, and equality. Uh, so, you know, this is another definition of nonviolence, just to see that it can be a little bit different. 
Um, but yeah, each one of you can think about what you would like to say on this topic. It's also a great question to ask people in the beginning of something and ask them at the end of something as well. Great, so um, any questions from you? Uh, yes. I just wanted to mention a, a one minute movie called The Wombat. And I don't know if you've seen it, but it's um, it's uh, really a, a, a really animated little thing about the the animal, <clears throat> the wombat, <clears throat> bat. and what the point it makes is how interrelated we all are. And so war makes no sense. But it's really, if you look it up, it's really worthwhile something to sh to look at and then show. Great, thank you, the wombat. So uh, just a few more little points here. Um, from our perspective as campaign nonviolence, you do not need to attempt to offer a comprehensive all-encompassing session on nonviolence. <laughs> you could literally go on for 10 hours about this, which is great if you're doing a filibuster. Um, but you know, just pick one one piece, maybe it's a nonviolent solution, maybe it is conflict skills, maybe it's uh, violence de-escalation, um, maybe it's a story. So, you know, pick one piece and, and do it really well. Uh, we, as an organization, really love it when people do um, elicitive or engaged learning experiences. So uh, finding ways to ask your people questions right? See, see what they know as well. Discussion is great. Pairings are great. Um, breakout rooms, if it's online. People are often skeptical about nonviolence, and it's okay, right? It's, you're not a failure if someone is, is questioning, still questioning <laughs> about nonviolence. Uh, that is the reality of learning and experiencing. Um, and so, you know, be be okay with people having questions or wrestling with it or being unconvinced. Um, and if someone is a little bit more open to one piece of an idea, that's a victory in our, our uh, kind of view. We look at nonviolence as a direction, not a separating line, as Thich Nhat Hanh said, um, that you know, rather than trying to categorize nonviolence, this is nonviolence or that is not, not nonviolence um, to engage and wrestle as a, as a conversational point as well. And one of the tools and resources that we think might be helpful for you in preparation is in our engaging nonviolence study guide. We do have a whole section on common misperceptions of nonviolence and what usually comes up in some responses to that. So when people are like nonviolence is weak, it's passive, uh, it fails. You're just going to get killed. Uh, you know, we, we've all gotten these questions a billion times and we've gotten a little better at responding to them. So uh, we, we give you some of these responses. I will also try to get this as an extract and send it in the follow-up email. And yeah, just, you know, try to be compassionate, open-minded, and uh, excited about engaging with people remember that you know we aren't teaching in the, in the you know paradise realm of a nonviolence culture we're teaching in the midst of a culture of violence so we're looking for change we're looking for people to learn something new to hear something that they never has, have thought about before maybe uh and i think everything is going to help yes peter question well more of a comment uh, if people are going to go public with uh, something about nonviolence, I think it's really worthwhile thinking about how you feel about property damage, because uh, that's very likely to come up, especially if you attract um, anybody from uh, the large group of people who believe that property damage is just fine uh, if it's done with the right spirit. And there's lots of different views on that. Uh, you know, I have my views very definitely, uh, but uh, I 
try not to get into that argument with people, but you have to be ready for it. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're talking about nonviolent action as uh, the piece of nonviolence that you're bringing forward. One thing we often say is that it, it's really hard to categorize property destruction as violence or nonviolence, and it's something for a whole conversation to have around it. Right. So depending on your situation, that may be all you actually need to say about it in that moment. If you're having a strategy meeting with your fellow activists, please have a seven hour conversation about it. <laughs> yes, stone cards. Um, I was going to suggest, uh, particularly if you have the freedom to meet in person, a great way to like do the whole teaching um, is a human barometer. So you say like on this wall, you agree it's totally nonviolent. And on that wall, it's, you know, total war. And then you like bring up things like property destruction. Um, the really bitter fight is if you get vegans and non-vegans in a room. Um, but, but um, you know, be prepared to facilitate. I always tell people when I facilitate, like, I don't make me blow a whistle. Like, you know, like, you know, you have to model your own nonviolent skills, but having people move their bodies, like somehow makes it more available for them to talk and share. Like once they've done that, like if you've got, sometimes I do teach things and people sit like little eggs and you're <laughs> like, what is happening for them? So getting them to move while they disagree is awesome. Great, thank you. Yes, and in that engaging nonviolence uh, study guide, we do also have um, the spectrum of violence, which is very similar to the barometer. Uh, so if you want a step-by-step, -step, how do I do this? You can find it in there as well. I'm going to put you in breakout rooms for eight minutes. Um, I would love you to share with your fellow breakout room people what's intriguing to you, what you might be thinking about doing, or that wonderful question, if I was going to hold a teach-in, this is what I would do, okay? And then we'll come back and I'll give you some uh, last little nifty links. Here you go. If anything goes wrong, just come back here and I'll search you out. Got it. Welcome back. We'll give people about 30 seconds to pop back in. The time flies. Doesn't it? Oh, you're yeah. having fun. The people you bring together, Rivera, are so lovely. Uh, it is a great joy of doing this work. Well, and I learned something that you've written all these books that I didn't know about. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Great. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so I hope that was helpful to even in a brief time get to articulate what you're thinking about doing and to hear what some other folks are thinking about. Um, this has been great to get to share these ideas and to, to feel like there's going to be people out there doing some of this great teaching work. I want to make sure that you have a few particular links. Uh, one is if you know right now that you're like, yeah, this is cool. I'm going to do this during action days. Please tell us. Uh, there is the link in the chat box. All these links will be in the follow-up email as well. Uh, you don't have to know all the details to sign up to be part of action days right now. Just say, yes, I'm going to hold a teach-in and uh, we will be able to follow up with any new resources that might that we might have, or if we update our toolkit, then you'll get a notice about that. Uh, we will also follow up and make sure that um, you we get the details from you as we get closer. And speaking of that toolkit, a lot of those resources I talked about from the coloring pages to the Force More Powerful videos, they're all hyperlinked in our toolkit. I just popped the, the whole lineup in there for all of the action days. But if you're looking for the very specific hyperlink for the teach-ins, here it is coming right after it. That's the next link in the chat box. Um, we have those coloring pages on our website and here is the link for that. And those nonviolence means posters 
are so cool. Our staff member Rosie Davila made those and they are here on our website. There's the link. And last but not least, um, if you want to know where those super awesome t-shirts are that were created, art was created by Bianca Pointner, uh, those are on our, you know, Redbubble shop. So we have lots of resources for this, but the most, the resource we most value is you, your passion, your time, your courage in getting out there, your shared vision with us for the culture of nonviolence, the idea that such change is possible, that we can be part of it, and that we're going to work together as a movement to really change and challenge and transform uh, the world that we live in to the world that we want to live in. So I want to thank you all very much and just close with a round of a word that describes your how you're feeling um, or something that was meaningful for you in today's session. And we can just do this popcorn style. Please come off mute and bring your voice into the space. A word uh, that describes what you're feeling or something that was meaningful for you. Appreciative. Hopeful. Energized. Motivated. Rededicated. Support. As always with you, Rivera, I got some new uh, ideas for uh, things that I might like to try. Excited. Appreciative. Encouraged. And thank you for uh, comments in the chat box, inspired, encouraged. Uh, I am grateful for all of you. So thank you. Feel free to all come off mute and say farewell as you hop off. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.